New Excel group by and pivot by functions allow you to aggregate your data in a single formula. Now you could certainly use a pivot table to perform the same tasks to show real time changes without having to manually refresh. So let's take a look exactly how these functions work and you can decide which method you prefer. We have this summary of events that took place at the Everett Arena for the past year. And you've got a lot of different events here. We've got trade shows, NFL games, basketball games, concerts, and so on. We have it broken up by month, tickets sold, attendance, staff on hand, and how much profit was made. Now we could use a number of functions to get some statistics from this data set, or we could use a pivot table. But for our purposes, we'll use the new group by and pivot by functions. So let's start with group by. We'll go ahead and enter group by. And the first argument that it's asking for is our row fields. Now, if you're familiar with the pivot table, the row fields are the categories that you're gonna pivot the data on. And those categories will be displayed on a row axis. So for this example, I'll choose the arena event, select all those. For the values, the values essentially are what we wanna pivot on to look at our data in a particular view. So I'll go ahead and select all our numeric information including the headers, hit a comma, and now we're at our function. And as you can see, you have sum, percent of, average, some pretty standard stuff. So to get started, let's just go with sum. Hit a comma, and now we're in our field headers argument. The field headers argument is where we specify if we actually want the field headers to be displayed, or if we want them to be taken into account but not be displayed. In this case, I do wanna see them, so I'll hit number three, which is yes and show. Hit a comma. Now the total depth argument is where we can decide if we want to show grand totals, subtotals, do we want our total showing at the top. For now, I'll leave those blank so we can see what the output's going to look like by default. So I hit a comma again, sort order, how we want it sorted. We'll get into that in a little bit. For now, we'll just leave that blank. And the last option here is the filter array. If there's any values or categories we want to filter on, this is where we would choose that. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and delete all these commas and just end it at our field headers because all those other ones are optional. Actually, including the field headers is optional. So we'll hit our closing parentheses and hit enter. As you can see, like a pivot table, the group by function took our arena events. And then because we specified sum, it took the sum of our value columns. And by default, even though we didn't choose to, we do have a total row down here at the bottom. So it's gonna do that by default, but we can change that setting. So if I go back into the formula, we hit that comma, and now we're in our total depth. We could hit zero to show no totals. We could hit one to show our grand totals, but that's showing automatically. Let's go ahead and hit negative one, and that's showing our grand totals at the top. Hit enter, and you can see right underneath the headers, we have our total row. Now, if we go back in and I change that negative one to zero, now those totals are gone. Now we can further customize this. Instead of sum, we could choose percent of, average, in this case, let's go ahead and select max, hit enter. And now while this is grouped, we're looking at the instances where the max value is taking place. Instead of max, we could change it to count. And as you see here, it's the same across the board. This is just showing us how many times that this specific event took place. So there are eight different basketball games that were recorded, two business seminars, five concerts, one monster truck rally. And you know what? Let's say that monster truck rally was kind of a one-time thing for this event center. Let's say we wanted to look at the total profit on all these events, but we'll exclude monster truck. And we'll do that using the filter array option. So if I go back into my formula, let's say we want the sum, and instead of all of our values, I just wanna pull that profit column. So I'll change that to F, hit a comma at the end, sort order. Let's sort it on the profit from highest to lowest. So if you wanna go into sending order, it has to begin as a negative value. Ascending obviously would be a positive value. The number you wanna select is the column you wanna sort on. In this new formula, we have our event column in column A, and we're only gonna be pulling profit in column F. So column F would be our second column. So I'll do a negative two, and now we're in our filter. So what do we wanna filter on? We wanna filter on the arena event. So let me go ahead and take this, copy that. Whenever the arena event not equal to monster truck, enter. And now you can see monster truck is gone. And we've got the sum of our profits for each one. We can even go back in and add that grand total. You could set it specifically here, or we could just get rid of that zero and our totals back up. 
Now, what if we wanted to see it by month and not by the event? Well, I could simply come here, change A to B. So we're looking at the month column. I can still leave that filter in there for the monster truck so we don't show that. Hit enter. And now you can see the sum of profit by month, excluding that monster truck rally. Now the real benefit of this function versus a pivot table is that when we add or change values, our group by function will update automatically. And if you're familiar with pivot tables, you know you have to refresh the data whenever you wanna see the new information reflected. So you see here this first line, we have January and we've got this large total here. What if we change one of the higher profit events from January to December? So this one here, we have $5 million in profit. If I change that to December, and now you can see that that information was updated. Now, if we get rid of this and we take a look at pivot by, pivot by works just like group by, but you get an extra argument. And that extra argument allows you to pull in column fields, just as you would in a normal pivot table. So we'll go ahead and do pivot by. Let's set our row fields to the month. We'll set our column fields as the event. Our values, let's look at tickets sold. Select those. For our function, we'll look at sum. I'll select three for the column headers because I do want to see those. We'll leave the next few arguments as their default setting. Go right to filter array. And let's filter on column A and get rid of monster truck. Hit enter. As you can see here, by default, it was sorted by the month, not in a time series kind of sort, but in alphabetical. And we've got the sum of the tickets sold for that month, for that specific event. We've got our totals on the right and our totals on the bottom. And there you have it. As I said before, you could use a pivot table and if that's what you're comfortable with, there's nothing wrong with it. This just gives you an alternative to perform the same kind of aggregate functions without some of the additional steps. So let me know in the comments, which one do you prefer? pivot tables, or the new group by pivot by functions. See you next time, data people.